Hi everybody, I'm Sal, so this must be Sal Says What. Thanks for watching. I just read the first issue of The Bunker this week, which is a story about destiny, desolation, and douchebags. We meet six 20-something friends out in the woods putting together a kind of time capsule. It's a little hokey, as pointed out by one of their party members routinely, but... A sweet concept nonetheless, and I really like the idea. Joe Infernari's art brings a sense of dread and discomfort to the proceedings, which of course doesn't turn out the way they expect. After the first few digs of the shovel, they discover their prime burial spot is the site of a bunker with five out of six of the party's names printed on it. They immediately set out to opening and entering said bunker, finding letters addressed to themselves inside along with hundreds of additional material for them to root through. The bulk of the issue is the fallout of those characters reading the messages of Dune from their future counterparts, and the sexual drama that unfolds as a result. The art never lets up and it contributes to a quickly convoluted story with lots of different threads and characters and questions from me by making a few characters difficult to distinguish from each other. The coloring is deliberately bleak and overcast, which gives the whole look of the comic a feeling of persistent rain clouds overhead. Some panels feel like they receive a little more attention than others at times, which is, I think, problematic when you have such a large cast and a complicated premise, which take place in multiple time periods. There's very little there's very little there's very little reprieve from the action, which wouldn't normally be a criticism, but I could have really used a splash of brightness to take the edge off. But maybe that's actually the point of the bunker, which makes it a very atmospheric book. Joshua Hale Fialkov has written an interesting comic, if not interesting characters. See, while I find myself interested in one or two of their stories and the overall premise, the bulk of the cast is made up of frustratingly antagonistic douche nozzles. In essence, he's produced very believable 20-somethings. The dialogue is maybe a little too realistic, in that I don't care what the characters are saying, and the characters themselves are inelegant in their speech and do a very poor job of conveying their thoughts appropriately. It's actually kind of frustrating to read, and I don't know if that was intentional or not. Either way, the atmosphere of the bunker is very deliberate, and I think I understand the message. Those last couple of pages, by the way, were actually really chilling but would be less so if I were to recount them. So, simply put, if you're looking for this kind of book, pick it up, because it's totally worth the read. And I'm definitely going to give issue two a shot. The Bunker retails for about four bucks. It's published by Oni Press. You can pick it up at your local comic book store, of course. And you can also get it on digital download through comicsology.com. Now, this book actually came out in February, sold out, went back to print, and so I guess it's selling pretty well. But there's absolutely no buzz about when issue two is supposed to come out, so... I don't know, but pick up issue one and check it out because it's totally worth the price. If you're a fan of off-kilter, atmospheric, slice of life meets the apocalypse, I would say give the bunker a look. Hey, thanks a lot for watching Sal Says What, everybody. If you got a minute, you can like the video, subscribe to our channel, and stop by littlehouseonline.com for even more stuff that we do. You can also click the box over there to see the last episode we did. See you next time.